I'm going to show and break down five beginner friendly paintings. Now I'm gonna put the photo references of each of these paintings up for you to take a screenshot if you wanna try and paint these on your own. That is my gift to you. But if you want the full tutorials that go along with these, they're on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. Now this collection of paintings is what I call a painting path, which again is found on my Patreon. See, I have literally hundreds of painting tutorials on my Patreon page and I was getting a lot of students asking me like, hey, I'm a beginner, which one should I start with? Or, hey, I wanna work on my landscapes, which tutorials do you suggest? What order should I go through the tutorials? So I created painting paths. I handpicked certain tutorials and placed them in a certain order to help you focus and get better on a certain aspect of painting. For example, if you're brand new to oil painting, I have the beginner builder path, which is what I'm gonna be talking about in this video. But I also have the learning landscapes path and the perfect portraits path. Now, I've found that my students really like this. You know, if you're like me, you like to have structure to the way that you learn and these painting paths give you that structure. You always know what to paint. You're also not going to dive into a painting that's too complicated and that you're gonna struggle with and get demoralized. Like I made these so they progressively get a little bit harder each time, but not too hard that I completely demolish your confidence. So these painting paths have been really helpful and I've actually liked putting them together and I plan on putting more together and have other different painting paths in the future. So the beginner builder path. The first painting is this simple still life painting. Now you might've seen this painting because I've showed it in a previous YouTube video, but it's just such a great, perfect way to start. Because the main thing this one focuses on is the concept of building a painting by using big shapes of flat color. Because in this tutorial, I work from versions of the photo reference that I've put into Photoshop and have made simple shapes of flat color. And as I paint, I switch out the reference photo for when I add in smaller, more specific shapes of flat color. This is gonna help you from getting lost in detail because the detail's not gonna be there. Doing this exercise is really gonna shift the way you think about painting and get you to start thinking in terms of big shapes and simplifying a subject, working big to small and dark to light. And at the end, I show you how you can finesse the edges of these shapes to give it a more realistic look. All right, next is the still life painting of a chopped up sweet potato. Now this subject is a little less simple than the previous one. It requires a little more drawing and I introduced the concept of doing an underpainting. And this is just a simple painting with a wash to map out the values. And you're actually going to take what you learned in that first painting and apply it to this painting. We're still gonna start out with big shapes of flat color. But unlike the first painting, where I got all the way to the end and then went back in and finessed the edges. Here, I'm gonna work the edges as I go. And this is a great subject for beginners because the chopped up potatoes are already broken down into simple flat planes, which makes it easier to identify the colors and values. It's a lot harder to identify color changes and value changes in smooth round objects like fruit, which is why the next tutorial in this painting path is the plain fruit exercise. This is gonna help you strengthen that skill of seeing and imagining a smooth object with flat planes. I've talked about this in a lot of videos. When I first saw this in Kevin McPherson's book, I was like, wow, this totally blows my mind. This makes everything make perfect sense. You know, it's really hard to identify value changes in a smooth object, unlike planed objects like the sweet potato that you painted earlier with perfectly flat plane surfaces. So it makes sense to look and think of smooth objects as if they were carved out of wood with flat planes. So adding a certain amount of blockiness to anything that you paint is just going to give it more structure and weight. You know, this isn't an easy thing to do, but painting this plain fruit is the best way to practice and strengthen that skill. Now, if you wanna know how I made this plain fruit, I just made it out of air dry clay. I didn't really know what I was doing. I just got it and just did my best to try and mold it. And then once it dried, I painted it with acrylic paint. Oh, right, quick side note. I get a lot of people asking me about color mixing. Like a lot of people struggle with knowing what colors to mix, what colors to have on your palette and all that stuff. That's why I've made the color mixing video from my Foundations of Oil Painting course available for free. If you wanna check that out, the link to it is in the description of this video. 
All right, the next painting is a small landscape painting done with a big brush. Now I painted this on a small six by eight inch canvas using a relatively big brush. I think it was around a number six. And I also only used the primaries in white to keep things very simple and very straightforward. Now this scene is more complex than any of the previous tutorials, but that's the point here. And that's the point of doing it small with a big brush is that's going to force you to simplify and get rid of detail. You're not gonna be able to paint detail on such a small canvas and with such a big brush. Speaking of brush, it's also gonna help with your brushwork because you're only going to use this one brush for the whole painting. But you're gonna learn how to turn it on its side, you know, get big strokes, smaller strokes. A lot of people think, oh, like I need to use a bunch of different brushes. The more brushes, the better. And I actually think it's kind of the opposite. I think your paintings benefit so much from being able to utilize one brush a bunch of different ways. I mean, most of the time when I paint, you know, just like a normal painting, I might use three or four different brushes for the entire painting. This is also gonna help you use the right amount of paint. Since it's a small canvas and you're using a big brush, it's gonna force you to use more paint than you're probably comfortable with, which is gonna help you a lot. I've found the tendency with beginners is they don't put out enough paint on their palette and they don't use enough paint. So this is gonna help break that bad habit and get you using a good amount of paint. This is also gonna help you with greens. I get a lot of people struggling like, oh, like how do you handle different greens in a landscape? There are a whole bunch of different greens in this landscape and I walk you through and show you like how I shift the color and the value of the greens to where they need to be. Now also kind of connected to that idea of greens is that this is also gonna teach you about atmospheric perspective, which is very important for landscapes. You know, it's what happens to colors as they get further away from you. And we get to practice that with greens because we have greens in the foreground, we have greens in the middle ground, we have greens in the background and you get to see firsthand what happens to that green as it gets further away. You can see that yellows drop out first, and then reds drop out, and it's just more blue and cooler in the background. All right, the last tutorial in the beginner builder painting path is this Ocean Rocks landscape. It's from a photo I took in El Matador Beach in California. And one of the first things you'll notice is that I have more colors on my palette. So you get to see how I utilize other colors on my palette other than the primaries. I also do what I call a value map for this painting and talk a little more about composition in terms of mapping out the scene in just three values, a dark, a midtone, and a light, and making sure my focal point, which is gonna be where the whites of these waves are hitting the darks of the rock, because I want my focal point to be the area of highest contrast, I meaning the only place in the painting where the darkest dark and the lightest light touch. So again, that's very similar to the wash underpainting we did with the sweet potato, but we're talking more about composition and kind of getting those ideas and concepts through a little more clearly. I also change a couple things for the composition. I talk about that, like I move a couple rocks to balance out the dark shapes within the composition. Now, I bring what we learned about atmospheric perspective from the small landscape painting to this one as well, because I actually have to change what I see in the photo a little bit. I wanna put some separation between these two rocks, and so I have to utilize atmospheric perspective just a little bit. You know, I wanna make the bigger rock sit behind the smaller rock, and so I do that by cooling it down just a little bit and also having the contrast between light and dark brought closer together. I'm also gonna paint it more simply. You're not gonna see as much detail in this bigger rock because I want it to sit in the distance. The smaller rock in the foreground, I'm gonna put a little more detail, be a little more crisp with my edges, and make it a little warmer. Now speaking of edges, I'm also gonna talk about softening edges. Like I soften the edges of this white water to help it read more as water. You know, white capped water, it's not a solid hard surface. And so I communicate that with softer edges. All right, so if you do any of these paintings and you post them on Instagram, make sure to tag me at Forza43 or use the hashtag paintcoach. I would love to see them. All right, I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.